Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'll be testing out a new digitizing software. So this is called Ember and it's completely free to use and yeah, it's really great since there's definitely not many free digitizing software out there. The only one that there is is Inkstitch. Correct me if I'm wrong though. Because I remember back then when I was doing research, looking for software, the only free software that came up was Inkstitch. So I did try using this really quickly yesterday. So today will be my second time using this. So I'm still really new. So to access Ember, um, it's, on, it's on the browser. So all you have to do is search up emberdesign.net. If you don't have an account, sign up first. Uh, it's really quick and simple. And then once you've logged on, this page will open up, the editor page. There's no projects right now because I haven't created anything yet. They have an uh, explore feature so you can see other people's work. And I believe you could download it and also stitch it out. Okay, so now I'll just start digitizing. So I'm just going to digitize um, this one right here. Um, first, let's try copying the image in and pasting it in. So yeah, yesterday I realized that it's not possible to directly paste images in. You have to go upload and go image and then just copy the URL instead. So copy image link and then paste it in. And there it is. So let's see, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to get the ruler and just measure it out. 1.8 inches and then it'll be 1.6 inches. Yeah, that's a good size. And yeah, I'm just going to start digitizing right away. Uh, so yeah, once again, this is my second time using it. And I'm just going into this blind almost. I just want to see how intuitive it is first and if I could like figure things out without looking at the tutorial. Um, but if you want the tutorial, you could just go back to the main page and tutorial. They also have a video on how to use it. So I'm going to choose draw close shape and then I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so first I'm just going to create the mushroom cap first. Okay, so yeah, I'll start with a right click. So a right click will create curved paths. And then if you do left click, um, this creates straight lines. So yeah, the blue nodes means it's straight and then the green ones means it's curved. And it's really easy if you make a mistake, all you have to do is just press backspace on the keyboard. And I'm just going to press enter. Okay, so I'm just going to readjust the nodes. Okay, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but this one it should be curved. So I'm just going to press backspace, that deletes the node. And then I just uh, right click to add another curved node. And then let's see, I'm going to turn this into a fill. So I went to here and I guess tatami is what I want. And let's right fill. Oh, let's select object. Okay. And then you could turn on the realistic view by clicking here. Um, I'm going to turn it on. Um, let's see, for the stitch angle, I'm going to do 170. And yes, so I'll just continue now. I'm going to go back to the layers. And I'm just going to create the body. Okay, and let's also turn this into a fill. And then let's go here and then click on fill. Okay, so yeah, that was pretty easy. And I'm just going to change the colors. 
Uh, let's see. Let's do beige. Let's yeah, this looks about right. And then next, um, I'm gonna do the inner details. So let's see. Let's draw a circle. I'm gonna uh, zoom in. Okay, so I've created one eye. I'm just going to copy and paste this right here. Ah, okay, so this is how you make it transparent. So I just click undo this layer and then I right click. Ah, okay, that makes sense. And then I could just lower the transparency. And then I guess if I want to make it uh, visible again. I just turn this back up. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Right, then I'm just going to move on to the blush again. Okay, and then let's zoom out again. And then turn this into a fill. Um, okay, and I'm just going to copy and paste the blush to here. So now I'm just going to do the mouth part and see, draw open shape. And I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, is there a way to flip this horizontally? Um, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, so unfortunately it seems like I can't um, flip it horizontally, uh, which is totally fine. Okay, let's just um, select these two and then go to fill. Then we go to this one, outline, and then we change this to satin. Okay. Let's see, I'm going to make this overlap a little bit more. Oh, I could change the width to 1.7. And this one as well. And put seven. So for the layers, let's just make this visible again. Okay. Okay, so the final part is just to do the little circles on the mushroom cap. So let's just lower the transparency. Perfect. So, I mean, this is art. I don't have to make it exactly follow the image. So I'm just going to do a perfect circle here. And And then I'm too lazy to make a, another half one, so let's do a little circle. Okay, like this. I'm gonna put it here. Let's go back to the layers, and I'm just gonna select all the mushroom spots and turn these into tatami fills. And let's update the color as well.
spectacle. Mm. Okay, and then I'm just gonna change the transparency back up. Now, the one thing that I forgot to do was to cut holes into the orange layer. So this is optional, but I find that if I'm using my single needle machine, if I do like two embroidered layers directly on top of each other, it doesn't stitch out well. So I usually just like would cut like a hole for these overlaps here. But when I use my multi-needle machine, I don't really see this issue. So that's why I say this step is optional, but yeah, I'll just do this step anyways, just to show you how you could make holes. So first, I'll just make this more transparent. And then I'm just going to click on this orange layer, click here to edit, and then cut holes. Okay, so that's done, and I'll show you how it looks. Yep, so there's a hole there now. And then I'll just do the same for this one. And then let's click on the orange layer again. And then you press enter. And now that I'm done, I'm just going to turn the transparency off. I'm going to do this for each layer that I adjusted. And now we are done. So I'll just have to save this again. And I'll make mine public. So this way you guys can take a look at my design. And yeah, you could download it and stitch it out yourself too if you want. So I'll just save changes and also download it. And now it should be in the explore page. And yesterday when I was testing this out, I, I thought there was autosave. So I didn't save anything and then I just exited out of the browser. Yeah, I realized that that was a very dumb thing to do. I should have checked first. But yeah, it seems like there's no autosave. So very important that you remember to save your project. Um, overall, um, it was very easy to figure out how to digitize. Um, I think my experience with Ink Stitch definitely helped. I think this is definitely more beginner friendly. Um, Ink Stitch does a bit of a learning curve and it's not as intuitive. So this is the final look. Um, around the mushroom cap, you can see some white thread showing up. That's not really a digitizing error, that's more of a embroidery machine issue. Basically, the pension is incorrect, and that's why the bobbin thread is showing up. But everything else looks pretty good. I think I would re-digitize it though, because the holes, I think I made it too big, which is why there's like some white thread around the spots. But everything else, I think the software is actually really good. It's free and beginner friendly. Thank you for watching this video. If you are looking for free digitizing software, I recommend giving Ember a try.